Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another fun episode of Terrible Tabletop Tutorials from the Corona Quarantine Kitchen. As always, I am your host, MD Welch, and today, no tabletop photography. We're actually gonna get into workflow a little bit. Uh, I got some good feedback from our last workflow video, so I wanted to continue with this. And today we're gonna talk about the crop tool workflow uh, between different applications and potential pitfalls and solutions for you. Now, as far as application goes, I'm hitting the big ones today. So we're gonna be talking about Lightroom Classic, which used to be called Lightroom, Lightroom, which used to be called Lightroom CC, Photoshop, which is still Photoshop, thank goodness. Uh, not Photoshop Elements though, sorry Photoshop Elements users. And also Capture One, which is probably the one odd application for many of you who are using the cloud. You might not have Capture One. Uh, before I go any further, let me say that I'm neither sponsored by Adobe nor Capture One. And also I haven't used other programs. These are the ones I'm experienced with, so therefore that's the ones I'm going to talk about. But I would imagine that the workflow in just about any other image editing program is gonna be similar. Um, so if you're using those programs, you're going to look for these little features and see what they have and they don't have. So first of all, let's talk about basic cropping workflow. When should you crop? Where should you crop? And when I mean where, I mean what application should you actually use? First of all, my best advice to you is that cropping should actually be done at the end of your editing process, not the beginning. I used to always crop right inside of Lightroom or Lightroom Classic and just go ahead and send that image right over into Photoshop being cropped. The problem is I then would get a request from a boss or a client saying, hey, we need some more room for copy or text. We need some more space on the left or the right. And that would create a lot of problems. So running into that just a few times, I stopped doing all of my cropping at the beginning of the process and leaving it towards the end of the process. Also, small disclaimer, as an editorial commercial photographer, more often than not, I don't crop my images when I give them to clients anymore because they know what they need, they know the space that they need and they could go ahead and crop as need to. If I was a family portrait or wedding photographer, you better believe I'm doing all of my cropping. So when and where you crop and what applications that you use and your intention behind it, it's going to have also a lot to do with the type of photography that you do. So let's just assume that I am cropping my images. Still, I'm not cropping at the beginning. I'm going to crop at the end because I want as many options as possible. I'm also not cropping in Photoshop if I could help it. I am going to crop in a raw editor. So that is Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, or Capture One. And the reason why I'm doing that is because all of these applications allow me to crop the image non-destructively. I don't have to worry about accidentally cropping off stuff and then not getting it back after the fact. So that is a huge plus. Also, most of these programs, Lightroom Classic and Capture One especially, allow me to make virtual copies or clone variants, as Capture One would call it. And then I could have the exact same image but I have four versions of it cropped four different ways for whatever reasons. I like to have those options, right? Now, before the uh, comments start to fly, I'm aware that there is delete cropped pixels as an option here for the crop tool inside of Photoshop that you could check or uncheck that. That is fine, except it creates a larger PSD file. And if you already have a large PSD file, that's problematic. And also it takes longer to crop. So it's not as much of a time saver but that doesn't mean that Photoshop is bad for cropping. In fact, it's very good as you'll see in a moment. So that is a basic workflow of when I crop, right? I crop at the end and also where I crop, I crop in a raw editor. But let's talk about some potential pitfalls when using these raw editors here, specifically Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, because they're very, very powerful, but they do have one major issue. Now, I'm going to do this in Lightroom Classic, but um, Lightroom itself has almost the exact same controls here. They're much more simplified. And by the way, Lightroom doesn't get enough credit. I know a lot of people hate the whole cloud concept, but it's very streamlined, especially if you don't use any of those modules. Uh, it's very simple. It's very easy to use. It is missing a few few features from Lightroom Classic, but it's not the end of the world. So again, we're going to do this in Lightroom Classic. I'm already in the develop module. I already have the crop tool selected here, and I'm not going to go through every nuance of the crop tool and all that kind of stuff. I want to just more focus on pitfalls of workflow at this particular point. I'm going to set my aspect ratio here to four by five. Now, if you're not completely aware, this might be a big takeaway for you just getting into the crop tool. All DSLRs, all mirrorless cameras shoot at an aspect ratio of two by three or four by six. So that means you get all of this space. But when you switch to four by five or eight by 10, it's more towards a square than it is a rectangle. And you're going to lose information off the top or the bottom. So in my case, in this particular image, I shot 
really wide or really loose, giving myself that extra space that I might need in post-production. Now, in this particular image's case, my friend Tasha here, who models for me a lot, this was my favorite image of the series, but it was when she was the furthest away walking towards. So I have to crop, if nothing more, because there's way too much space around this image. Now, this is where the problem's at. Even though that this is a 42, 45 megapixel image out of a Sony A7R Mark III, I'm not too sure how tight that I can crop. I know from experience, but if I was looking at this image for the first time, I wouldn't know how tight I can make this crop field. So again, I'm at four by five, eight by 10. I'm gonna come into here and I'm gonna do a pretty aggressive crop. Something like this. Now the problem is, is I have no idea, none in Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, how big this image is. I can double click on it, I can accept the crop. Of course, it's non-destructive. I could go back at any time and reset this, but I am really unaware of the final size of the image. Is this a 16 by 20 at 300 pixels per inch? Is it barely an eight by 10 at 300 pixels per inch? I don't know. And especially for those of us who are still shooting lower megapixel cameras, this is very problematic because you can't really aggressively crop without worrying about pixelization in the final print. Digital is completely different. You, you can see whether or not it's digitized, but for print, you're kind of operating in the dark in both of these programs. Now, your only option here really is to open it up in a program that will tell you resolution, width and height by pixel dimensions, right? And give you that information, which brings us back to Photoshop. Photoshop does give you this information, but unfortunately in the crop tool, it doesn't give you this information all in one place. So with the crop tool selected for the options, I can choose a width and height for resolution here. So I could plug in 16 inches by 20 inches, there we go, and set 300 pixels per inch in the options bar, right? And I have this, but the only problem is if I do an aggressive crop, I have no idea if I'm adding or subtracting pixels here. Also with the crop tool, it could get a little sketchy because I can crop outside the area of the original image, which I'm not really wild about. I do have the option as mentioned before though, to keep it non-destructive by having this box unchecked. What I would tell you if you're doing this in Photoshop, because you're gonna have to do this anyways, you're gonna have to check the image size after the crop, is don't crop to a specific size. Keep cropping to a specific ratio. It's just much easier to keep a, a, your handle on. Plus, you could crop to that ratio and always size it down to a smaller. So you send somebody a 16 by 20, they could always just reduce the size down to an eight by 10. So Ratios probably better than dimensions here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, again, aggressively crop. I'm not too sure how aggressive I can do. I'm doing this relatively quickly though. And there I go. Now I'm gonna hit the check mark and I'm only doing this because I do wanna show you why I'm not wild about doing this in Photoshop because you're going to see the time that it takes to render everything out and do the crop. And that's not too bad, but I am working on a pretty fast computer system and I do have a lot of layers going on here. So this could have taken longer on a little bit of a slower computer. So here's my image, so far so good. Now it doesn't matter if I did this in Photoshop or I did my cropping in Lightroom. The next step is critical to really figure out what you actually have here. You're gonna open up the image in Photoshop if it's not already open because you did your crop there. You're gonna come into image size and this is the only real window in the Adobe spectrum between Photoshop, Lightroom, and Lightroom Classic. There's a big asterisk in the air there that will actually tell you what you have. So if I set the width and the height here to inches, I now have an 11 by 13 at 300 pixels per inch, which if I'm trying to do like a 12 by 16 or maybe a 16 by 20, depending on the, the specifications of the printer, that might be enough information. And by the way, if you're having people do your printing for you, talk to them, send them the file. They usually don't want you doing any sort of changes to the image simply because they know what their equipment can do. It's always a good idea to trust your vendors and have a conversation with them. So this may be enough information, but isn't it terrible that this is the only way to ascertain whether or not you have enough information? As a small side note, this is not an impossible thing for Adobe to do. And I know this because if you've ever used Adobe InDesign, Adobe InDesign will tell you exactly what size an image is at a resolution when you resize images down in Adobe InDesign, right? Simple, easy to do inside of Adobe InDesign, but it is complicated inside of Photoshop. It's 2020 Adobe, please give us a better crop tool. 
Now there's one piece of software where we haven't talked about that I've been saving towards the end and this is Capture One. Now, if you've watched any videos so far of mine, you know that I do a lot of things in Capture One. I love the export feature inside of Capture One. It's not to say that I don't use Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. I like their interfaces. I like their controls. Capture One still to me feels very clunky, even with the new update that they that's coming in May of 2020. It still feels like there's there's a lot of refinement to be done here. But you can't argue against the power of export inside of Capture One. And Capture One handles cropping the way that cropping should be done. Now, this is a little bit of a kind of a multi-step process. But the first thing to get accurate cropping uh, out of Capture One, and keep in mind it's non-destructive, so I don't have to worry about anything here. And I, could, I can load in PSDs uh, inside of Capture One and edit them as much as I want to. I have a process recipe, which is their fancy way of saying export preset, set up. I call it full size. And if I go to the process recipe panel itself, um, which shows me the actual details of it, I have this set, and I'm gonna go ahead and reset this because I was doing some testing earlier. I have this set at a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I have JPEG at 90 quality in my color space. But the two important things to pick out here are my resolution and my scale, which is currently set to fixed. And it's set to 100%. Now, I can do width and height, I could do dimensions, I could do width by height, I could do long and short edge, but I leave it at fixed because fixed offers me a very interesting and nice solution. If I come to the crop tool, I'm going to choose my 4 by 5 aspect ratio, come in, click on the crop tool once, immediately it jumps to a 4 by 5 But watch what happens as I start to resize this box. I will get a indicator for both the width and the height telling me what the current width and height of the file is at this resolution. So as I'm starting to crop this down, ooh la la, I know exactly how big this file is going to be at 300 pixels per inch. So I'm getting real time feedback on exactly what this file is capable of producing. Even better if I was to come over and let's say, because I know a lot of you are saying, oh, 300 pixels per inch is a very old kind of urban legend that all files need to be 300 pixels per inch. I know they don't need to be. I was just starting there. It's not a bad number to use, but maybe 240 is going to work for you. I'm gonna hit the enter or return key on my keyboard. I'm gonna come back into here. And the minute I start to touch the corners of the crop tool or the handles of the crop tool, notice that the, hand, the indicators now change showing me that I now have something closer to a 16 by 20 in here at 240 pixels per inch. So the benefit of Capture One is I could have all my virtual copies. I could do non-destructive cropping, but I also don't have to go into Photoshop to know how aggressive I can do this. I could also take this further. I could go into a more landscape orientation. So if I needed to maybe do this for a book, again, I know exactly what my resolution, my width and my height and my pixels per inch is going to be inside of this program. I think this is a simple solution for Adobe. I know that they can do it. They've done it in InDesign. I would love for them to do it in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic because those programs are great. They just need this one extra feature to tell us in real time what we're able to do with our crop tool it's great to Capture One has it. If you're in the market, Capture One's a great tool. If you're not in the market, you're using the Adobe Cloud, I urge you to just play around a little bit. You'll start to know what your files are capable of doing at megapixels and how tight you could go. But every now and then, maybe open it up in Photoshop, if nothing more, run that image size, see what your actual true file size is before you send it off. And always, if you're having somebody else do your printing, have a good conversation with that vendor. Let them tell you what they're capable of giving you. A lot of times they'll just tell you to crop it to a particular ratio and just give it to them and they'll figure it out for you. And if you're doing your own printing, this is where experimentation is gonna come in and you're gonna have to run some tests and see how low you can get that resolution number to go before you start to lose detail. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment letting me know what you liked about it. Also, any requests for future videos. But also, please give it a like, subscribe, let your friends know what's going on in the quarantine kitchen. As always, I hope you're doing well as well as your friends and your family. And I wish you all the best. Take care.